Good afternoon and welcome to the St. Paul Sports Network. I'm Charlotte Farrell with your play-by-play -play for today's 4-15 matchup on Levering Field. Natalie, what can we expect from today's game? Hi, I'm Natalie Horn, your color commentator. Today's matchup is between the St. Paul School for Girls Gators and the Glenelg Country School Dragons, two teams who have been at the top of their conference in the last couple years. Yes, two very competitive teams who have previously battled for a conference championship. The Gators are coming off of a three-game win streak and I believe are planning to continue this. Today's matchup will definitely be a challenge since Glen Elg has lots of great players and many headed to Division I schools. Yes, St. Paul's also has many great commits, so this should pan out to be a pretty even matchup. Um, we should be underway in just a couple minutes. Um, the Gators record has grown to 6-1, and one, so they're having a pretty good season. Mm -hmm. Not totally sure for Glen Elg, but they did just beat Roland Park 12-10. to 10, and They did lose to McDonald. Yes, so they lost to the top team and beat one of the probably fifth team in the conference, yeah. so they should be a pretty competitive team and definitely will not be yeah. an easy game. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're calling out the starting lineups. Not totally familiar with the Glenel roster yet, so forgive me for that, but I will get back to you when St. Paul's is called out. It's a very beautiful day out here in Brooklynville. Very sunny. Yes. Not a lot of wind like last week, so that should be nice for the players. Today just started to warm up. It's gotten very nice outside. Yes. Ideal playing conditions. Mm -hmm. All right, now for St. Paul's starting lineup. Number one, Sophia First we have Herrera. junior defender Sophia Herrera, who is headed to Maryland in two Number years. Five, then we have sophomore Colleen Lorden, another defender. Number six, now we have freshman number six, Charlotte Vaughn, great attacker, just had a hat trick last game, so let's see what she'll do today. Then we have senior defender, Elena Aldave, who's headed to Monmouth next year. Now we have junior Marley O'Day, committed to Clemson, also came off of a great game, so we'll love to see how she'll do today. Another junior commit, Caroline Hoskins, she's headed to Florida. Number 16, Maggie Porter. Yet another junior commit, Maggie Porter, attacker headed to Penn Number State. 17, and our fourth in a row junior commit headed Number to USC. Midfielder and draw taker Kira Ballas, who will be attending Clemson Number next year for lacrosse. Lily Schwing. Sophomore defender Lily Schwing. Varsity returner, great athlete. Another senior defender commit, Christina King, who I think will be starting on the circle today. She's committed to Georgetown. And senior goalie, Susan Radeball, committed to Florida. So very impressive lineup for the Gators.
Okay, so we're about to start the game. Um, before we start, shout out to Lily Schwing's Grandma Mimi if you're watching this. Thank you for being such a great fan. Thank you so much for watching Mimi. Colin Elk is already taking the field and St. Paul's will be out shortly. They have lots of high spirits. Yes. Um, I believe number eight for the Dragons is taking the draw. And that is Lily Preston, who's a freshman. Wow. Freshman versus senior for the draw. Yes. I believe this team has a good amount of freshmen. So does St. Paul. So you'll have to see that. different starting circle setup than last week. We have Riley Vasile on the circle instead of um, Christina King. So we'll see how she does. She did um, go on the circle a couple times last game. Mm -hmm. So we definitely know she's capable of getting draws. We're underway, very high draw. And Lily Preston for the Dragons picked it up. Not looking to settle just yet. They're looking pretty aggressive. Starting to see some movement. So I think they're trying to call a play right now. I think it's just cuts from the bottom of the drive. Number 42 is driving. Can't seem to get anything. She's having trouble getting past Caroline Hoskins. And that was Maggie Flanagan. I believe there was a shot did not, or a errant pass did not go. Feet in front, some trouble. But Susan Radeball vacuums that ball up. And she's looking to clear it. Riley Vasile makes a good cut to the ball. Dropped pass, but she'll recover it. And she'll take it up the field. Pass to Gabby Monsell to get it over the restraining line. Definitely pressuring the ball right now. A good pass down low, but it was dropped and also recovered by Marley O'Day. Drive by Riley Vasile and she'll shoot it and it will go. Beautiful shot. Great shot. Mid right side. And a great way to start off the Gators. Yeah, very quick goal. Riley Vasile had, I believe, a hat trick last game or at least two goals. So she's been playing very well this season, like she always does. And it's translating all across her games. Got that goal in just over a minute and a half, so really shows how quick the Gators are and could lead to some trouble for their opponent. Draw picked up by Kira Ballas. She'll pass it back to Lily Schwing who will start to run it up. She'll pass it to the freshman, Sarah Lim, who will take it over. Dropped ball and recovered by Glenel. They'll give it back to their goalie and she'll pass it up to number 12. And she'll give that to number 42. You can already see that number 42 is a strong player for the Dragons. So um, the Gators will have to react to that quickly. Looks like they're settling it. It's been back and forth a little. 
So giving their team some time to recover and get set. Molly Binninger appears to be in for the Gators. Great defender. Trying to feed down low, but can't seem to get anything. And now they're trying to drive, gets doubled. She'll pass it out and it will be dropped and Lily Schwing is running for that ball. Didn't have the extra step on that one, so it is recovered by Glenelg. Shot clock is winding down. Trying to drive from behind. She gets in front, but the shot gets blocked, I think, by a defender. I think they're calling it inner sphere. And number 15 will take the center hash. And that is Katie Gorski, who's committed to Charlotte. Good stop by Susan. It went out and it was backed up by the Gators. And they'll take it up the field, trying to get it to the attack. Oh, almost looked like there was a slash on Lily, but I guess her stick didn't go all the way to the ground. And Sophia Herrera is running it up the middle now. She'll pass it to Canvaseal, another great freshman. Charlotte Vaughn's got it behind. She was really dangerous from their last game. And a pass up top to Marley O'Day, who will get knocked down as she tries to drive. And I believe they're issuing a yellow card. They are on number eight. And that is Lily Preston. She'll get the second hash. And let's see what she does. She'll pull it out, and they'll just pass it around until Canvas Seal will drive. Good drive, but a good stop by the goalie. Some commotion in front of the goal. A flicked ball to the restraining, and it will be picked up by Riley Vasile for the Gators. Maggie Porter trying to call it, um, shooting space, but was not lucky. And the goalie goes to intercept a pass down low to Charlotte Vaughn and knocked both of them down. So Charlotte will have it and the goalie will be behind. So an open net right now and if they can move quick enough, they'll get an easy goal. Down low. Feet up top was uh, knocked down. So the goalie's back in the cage. Riley Vasile with it up top. Passing it down low and around to Charlotte Vaughn. Back to Gabby Munsell and back up top. Now with Maggie Porter who will pass it into Caroline Hoskins. And Riley Vasile will get it and draw the shooting space. We saw her do that a lot last game and it was definitely working well. So glad to see her keep using that. And she'll shoot it and the goalie will save it but it will be scooped up by Gabby Munsell. So they will get a shot clock reset. Cam Vasile with it on the wing. She's been driving a lot today, and she's been getting really close, and she'll roll to the left, but she can't get anything there. Back up top to Gabby Munsell, who looks to drive but gets shut down. Now feed to Caroline Hawkins in the middle. She'll get some pressure. Drop pass out to Gabby Munsell, who recovers it. And a good feed in front from Marley O'Day to Caroline Hoskins, and it will be another goal for the Gators. They showed great determination and kept trying to get that, and they did. Yes. They got shut down a couple times, but they kept working, and it, the quick passing really opened stuff up. So glad to see them move it in the air rather than with their feet. That was a pretty long offensive set. So... I think next time, if they get it, they'll settle and try and catch their breath for a minute. Number eight is back in. Yes, number eight's card is over, and she'll be back on the draw.
Not sure where Kira Ballas is trying to place this one, whether it's going to Carolina Riley, but it has been going behind today, so let's see if the trend continues. It goes behind again, and Riley Vasile almost picks it up. Looks like there might have been an empty check, but no call, and number 42 for Glen Elg uh, recovers with it. And Glen Elg's got it over the restraining line. I think they're just going to pass around once to settle it. Very spread out right now. But I think they're getting ready to run a play. Looks like their team's pulling over to the left side and then cutting. Good cut by number 32, but it wasn't seen quick enough. And now number 42 is looking to drive. She'll get doubled and pass it out to number 8. Back to 42 is looking to drive. She'll be her first defender and a good shot, but a good save by Susan Ray to ball. It was ran out by Glen Elg and they will keep the ball. No reset on the shot clock. And another shot by number... 15 and it will go so that'll make the score two to one the Gators are still up that goal was by Katie Gorski their Charlotte commit definitely want to watch out for her in front of the goal Now we have Sarah Lim going in for Caroline Hoskins on the circle. Another freshman. Yes. Very good and aggressive player. And the ball has been going over to her side, so we'll see if she can pick this one up. Our draw. Had it in her stick for a second, but it rolled out. And now it will be picked up by Lily Schwing. Ref looks to have gotten in the way of that pass, but they're going to switch fields, and Sophia Herrera is going to run it up. She's got some pressure. She passed it back to Kira Ballas, who will get a bit of a push. And over to Christina King, who will take it over for the Gators. They'll take it behind with Maggie Porter right now. She'll feed it in front to Marley O'Day. It was received a little bit late, so not much of an angle, and she'll pass it back out. Now Charlotte Vaughn's got it on the elbow, and she'll give it back to Riley Vasile, who's looking to drive. Couldn't get anything there. She'll give it to Marley O'Day, trying to draw the shooting space. Could not get anything there again. Now Sarah Lim's looking to drive. Looks like she had some room, but decided to pull it out. Can Vasile with it up top. Back to her sister who will drive, and she'll get by. Good shot, but it was a little wide. St. Paul's was there to back it up. Almost a sister assist. Yes, no reset. Charlotte Vaughn looking to drive now. She'll pass it back up top to Sarah Lim, who will roll and shoot. A little wide. Only three seconds left on the shot clock. Good feed in front to Marley O'Day, but oh. And she got the goal off just in time. Right before the buzzer. Got it off with about one second left. I don't think the goalie was expecting that one, but Marley placed it well top right and got it in. And that will put the Gators up 3-1 to one with um, a little under three minutes left of the quarter. Great effort by the Gators to keep shooting and keep running out their shots.
Another draw, and it'll go right into the stick of number 42. She'll face some pressure, but she'll pass it to 38, who will carry it over the line for them. Glenelg's definitely looking to score in the last couple of minutes of this quarter. So St. Paul's defense can't let up and has to be ready for anything. glenelg has been generating their offense a lot from the top and then having cutters come in, which is something you don't see as often. Number 42 looking to drive. She'll beat her defender and take a shot, but Susan Ball stops that with no problem. Really great stop and good to not give them the opportunity to score in this quarter. Sophia Herrera will carry it over the Shane line, running at full speed, looking to maybe get a feed. Can't get anyone. They'll pass it around now. Charlotte Vaughn with it behind. She'll pass it up to Riley. Back down low. Good feed in front to Gabby Monsell and a great shot and goal. Another goal. goal. Wow, that was a beautiful shot from Gabby. She has great placement and great composure. I believe this is her second or third goal of the season. So really great to see from Gabby. And the Gators are now up four to one with just over a minute and a half of the quarter. So they will still have to worry about the shot clock since it's only 90 seconds and there's 97 seconds left in this quarter. Riley Vasile's taking the draw now with Christina King on the circle. And she takes the draw righty despite being left-handed. Some miscommunication on the Gators offense which will lead to a automatic possession for the Dragons. They've had some good opportunities generating those plays up top and dumping it to someone in the middle or just driving. Looks like they're ISO, doing an ISO up top, number 38, who's matched up with Christina King. Great defense by her. Now number 11 looks to drive. Some contact with her in the lace swing. Yellow card? Um, I don't think they're issuing a yellow card. I think they're just giving her the eight meter. And I believe they're calling it, they're not calling it on Lily. Number 11 looking to shoot. She'll pull it back out. Number 42 looking to drive. She's been taking a lot of these drives. And she'll try and get through, but she'll get checked right before her shot. Ball's down in front of the goal. And it'll roll into the crease and be scooped up by Susan. She'll pass it to Lily, who will look to run it up. Good pass to Gabby. And she's going to try and draw and dump, and she'll pass it to Marley. Drop ball. Picked up by Charlotte Vaughn. Back to Marley. Back to Caroline Hoskins and a good shot. It'll roll off the Dragons goalie's foot and that will end the first quarter. With the Gators up four to one. Very strong first quarter for them. Yes, a lot they came out a lot stronger than they did against Garrison, only having one goal in the first. Um, but this quarter they have four, so it'll give them a little bit of a cushion going into the second quarter. Um yeah. Glen Elg will also play Garrison on Wednesday. Yes, that should That's be a very good matchup. Yes, love to see how that one turns out.
Okay. About to start the second quarter. Talking strategy right now on the field. Yes. Like to see if the St. Paul's lineup changes at all. Um, despite the score, Glenelg had some good opportunities on cage. Um, Susan Radeball has just come up with some really great stops. So they definitely can't back down now because definitely a force to be reckoned with. They will most likely come out with more fire since they're down. Yes, eager to close that gap. Riley Vasile will be taking the draw again. We didn't get to see her take it last time because of, um, I think, too many players on the field. I believe that's what it was, too. They will also switch directions. So St. Paul's will now be scoring on the other end of the field. Riley Vasile taking the draw lefty this time. She's looking to get it to Caroline Hoskins, I believe. Our second quarter is underway. A very high draw over to Caroline Hoskins' side. And it will be recovered by number eight for the Dragons. Even as a freshman, she's proved to be a really good player. And is definitely showing um, why she gets so much time as a freshman on the field. Glenelg's looking to start something up top. Normally starts with number 42. And they will call out a play. I think it will be an ISO for number eight. Her and number 11 will pass it up top. It looks like they're almost doing a stack from behind rather than feeding it from behind the stack up top. And number 11 goes to drive. She'll get some contact. And they'll call it in the sphere and she'll get an eight meter. Uh, she is a lefty and is on the first hash on the top right of the eight. So a good angle for her. And she'll run it in and shoot, and it will bounce wide. But the Dragons will back it up. Again, no reset because it was not on cage. Colleen Lorden playing defense on number 22, and she'll play some good and aggressive defense and block her pass, knock it down, which will allow Kira Ballas to pick it up. Great teamwork by the Gators. Colleen's had some really great defensive stops like that, especially last game. And good awareness by Kira Ballas to pick it up. Uh, Sophia Herrera will run it over the restraining line to the Gators offense. And let's see what they'll do with their first offensive set in the second quarter. Riley Vasile looking to drive down low. She'll pass it up top to Sarah Lim. Send it over to Gabby. Riley Vasile looking to drive from the elbow. She'll dump it to Caroline Hoskins, who will switch to lefty and rip it. Amazing goal. Yes, they've really been uh, using the draw and dump a lot, and it's definitely been working, especially between Riley and Caroline. Just two great players who are so close on and off the field, which really allows them to be so connected and often allows for a successful play. So they got that goal in just under two and a half minutes. Pretty quick goal for them. We've had some very quick goals in only a minute and a half and some other goals that have taken about five minutes. And Riley Vasile will be taking the draw again. But this time righty. And Mr. Lazan has showed up to the game. So we'll have to go talk to him at halftime to get some more player reports. Very high draw. Caroline Hoskins battling with number 38 to grab it out of the air, but it will be picked up by number eight for the Dragons yet again. She's shown to be a really strong player. Yes. I would not know that she was a freshman if I saw her without this roster.
passing around the top right now and behind. Just called out a play. Looks like it's another ISO up top and looking for cutters. Number 42 looking to drive. She'll pass it to number 8. And back to 42. To now 38 who's looking to take her at 1v1. She'll get doubled and pull it out. Molly Benninger matched up with number 42 right now who will pass it over. I guess Molly B is just too intimidating. Number 15 will roll and take a shot, and it will get stopped by the defense before it even gets the goalie. And great pickup by Molly Binniger. Awesome play by her. Amazing sophomore. And I just love seeing her on the field. Me as well. Definitely one of the quickest players on the team. Sophia Herrera will run it all the way up to the attack. And the refs. I'm not sure what call they're making. I think there's a shot clock yes. issue. So not a foul or anything. Someone's done wrong on the field. Just a Something scoreboard malfunction. The scoreboard. And it will be put at 78 seconds. St. Paul's hasn't really seemed to back down. They look pretty aggressive on attack despite their four goal lead. Gabby Monsell looking to drive. She'll get by, but not a great angle. She'll pass it down low. Now it's back up top with Sarah Lynn, or sorry, Maggie, Maggie Porter. Porter. Thank you. She'll take a shot and it will go out. But it will be backed up by the Dragons, so change in possession. Goalie passed it to number 77, Nichelle Desbords, who's committed to Delaware, and she'll run it up the field for the Dragons. Another one of those good players to look out for. They'll just pass it around the top and settle it. Number 11, 42, and 8 for the Dragons have definitely been the players driving to goal. They're definitely their strongest players on this field. Yes, offensively. Um, but St. Paul's has done a really good job responding to that and sending the double right away. Also number 32 who looked to drive, but she got shut down. It's back up top with number 42 who's looking to either drive or dump it. She'll get mashed up with Colleen Lord and Lily Schwing and she'll fall down. I'm not sure it was a push. I think she kind of just stumbled over. I think she lost her balance. Yes, and Colleen Lord will pick it up and one hand run it up the field. Great job. Don't necessarily have numbers right now, so good choice by them to pass around and settle it. But another great play by Colleen defensively. Cam Vasile has it up top now, who will pass it to Gabby Monsell, who just came on. Grace Tedesco is also in now. Another freshman. Had an amazing goal last game, so I'd love to see her shoot again. She'll take it behind. Pass it up top to Gabby. We'll pass it to Marley, looking to drive. She'll get shut down. Down low to Riley Vasile, who will take it from behind. And a good roll around the crease, but the shot was stopped. And the Glen Oak goalie was there to back it up. Don't see goalies running out balls as much as um, in women's across as you do men's, but it's always great when you see a goalie make a play like that. And the ball just went out and will be Glen Oaks. Yes, there was a check in the midfield, but it will go off of a St. Paul stick, so it will be Glen Oaks ball. At the 50 with five minutes left of the quarter and half. They'll get it over the restraining line. And a, some contact with Molly Vinegar, and she'll pick it up. And another 
Defensive stop for Molly Benninger. Second one in a row. She's playing awesome today. Very aggressive defender, but also very composed. And you don't see her fouling a lot. Back down on the Gators attack. They'll swing it around. Maggie Porter looking to drive. She'll get some contact, but she'll get by and take a shot. It goes a little wide, but backed up by the Gators again. Now back up top with Marley O'Day. Looking to draw a pick. Doesn't work, and she'll pass it to Grace Tedesco. Caroline Hoskins looking to drive. She'll get some room and then pass it to Riley Vasile. Can't get an angle. Goalie goes to intercept the pass. She came out of cage for a second, but not enough time for the Gators to get a shot off. Cam Vasile looking to go to goal. She'll get shot down. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Got to generate something here. Riley Vasile will be her defender and go to goal. She'll get pushed before she shoots, but she'll still make it. And I believe that's her second goal of the day. I think that's correct. And she will get that goal despite being pushed. She made sure to finish the play. And the Dragons will call a timeout with three and a half minutes remaining in the half. So the game today is also very well attended. Yes, big, lots of fans out there. Big crowd out there. I think the JV lacrosse team has come to support. I believe. Yes, that's the JV team. Love to see athletes supporting athletes. Going back to that goal by Riley Vasile just shows how accurate her shots are. Despite being pushed, she was able to keep that one on target and secure another goal for the Gators. There are also lots of dogs today at the game. <laughs> yes, I do see some dogs. We love to see them on our beautiful campus. Yes, campus at this time of year is absolutely gorgeous. I don't think I'd want to play a sport anywhere else except for Levering Field on a beautiful sunny afternoon like this. Preach. I believe Kira Ballas will be switching with Riley Vasile and she'll take the draw again. and maybe they can get a goal or two before this half ends. And the score is now 6-1 for the Gators. And Dragons number eight again. Number eight for the Dragons plays for Heroes. And a lot of the Glen Oak team yes, does too. Most of the team is on Heroes. Very great club team. Have a couple players on St. Paul's who play for them too. Christina King will switch out with Riley Vasile on the circle. And it will go back to her. And Caroline Hoskins will pick it up. Running down with lots of speed. She's a very scrappy and aggressive player, but definitely very composed too. Doesn't really fold under pressure and managed to escape a triple team. Sarah Lim trying to drive to goal. She won't have anything. Now Grace Tedesco driving in a left-handed shot. It will get stopped in front of the goal and picked up by Caroline Hoskins. And after some confusion over a ground ball, possession will be given to Glenel. Goalie's looking to walk it up. 
She'll pass it to number eight. A little bit of a high ball, and it will pick, be picked up off the bounce by Elena Aldave. Almost pushed out. Yes, she did a really good job of staying composed under that pressure and staying in. Another shot clock, shot clock malfunction. And it will be set to 85. Just over two minutes left of this quarter. Love to see the Gators get another goal. And let's see what they try and do. Riley Basile is getting pressured by number 77. She'll dump it to Caroline Hoskins, who will go to goal. And another beautiful shot by her. Strong. Very powerful shot. Mid left side. I think that's her second or third of the day. Yes, I definitely, definitely not at, her first. Yes, at least her second goal. But, wow, she's a great player, and the draw and dump with her and Riley Basile has really been working well today. And just a classic play, you know. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. But I'd love to see some other players try that. And now we have Kira Ballas still on the draw. Same circle set up. Minute and 58 left of the half. Goes over to Christina King, who will bounce out of her stick, but she'll get pushed from behind, and possession will be given to her. She'll run it up the field. She's a very great player and very versatile. She thrives on defense, but also is very great on the offensive circle. Charlotte Vaughn looking to drive from behind. She'll feed it in front. And another pass to Caroline Hoskins for yet another goal. Our I believe that was another lefty goal. 6-1 now. 8-1. to 8-1. to one. And that's definitely at least her third goal of the day. She's having a great game per usual. And great awareness by Charlotte Vaughn to see that pass in the middle. It's tough knowing what to do with the ball when you're under a lot of pressure. But St. Paul's has been doing a really good job of not getting flustered and staying composed and making a great play. So a minute 25 seconds left in the half. No shot clock. Push on the circle by uh, Christina King and it will be given to the Dragons, who I think already had won the draw anyway. Definitely going to be aggressive and looking for a goal before the half ends. Number 38 looking to drive. She'll get stopped and dump it, and now number 8 looking to go. A little slip from Kira Ballas, but a good slide by Lily Schwing, and she won't be able to get by. Number 11 gets by, but Kira Ballas makes a a good check, what I thought. It uh, looked like she, um, number 11, had her stick hanging a little low, trying to shoot. But the ref will call it in the sphere, and she'll get an 8 meter. She'll run it in, and it will go. So that was number 11 for the Dragons. Jess Doreen, uh, an attacker, headed to Virginia Tech. So closing the gap um, between the two teams and putting the Dragons at two, and the St. Paul's Gators will remain at eight. With 47 seconds left in this quarter and half, so whoever wins this draw is definitely going to be running to goal. And Riley Vasile will sub in for Caroline Hoskins on the circle. Draw picked up by Christina King, but it will bounce out of her stick, and Kira Ballas will try and recover it, and she will. Passing it back to the defense. Sophia Herrera will look to run it up. She can't find a pass. She'll give it to Gary Monsell, 
who will then pass it to Grace Tedesco. Drop pass. She's fighting to pick it up. But Glen Elk's defense will recover and pass it back to their goalie, who makes a very long pass to number 11. Over to number six, and one more to number 22, who looked to have had an open goal, but three defenders came in on her just as she was dumping it to number 15. And it looks like they might be calling a shooting space just before the clock runs out. Yes, they call it shooting space. So one more eight meter of the half. They called it on Christina King. Looks like they were all marked up on her, but hard to tell from this angle. She'll bounce it and it will be stopped. So that'll put the Gators up eight to two at the end of the first half.
Welcome back to the second half of the Gators vs. the Dragons. Just a minute or under a minute left of halftime before both teams take the field again. Natalie, how do you think the Dragons are going to approach coming back in this game? I think they're going to go out with their best effort and try to attack as much as they can. Yeah, it's definitely going to be utilizing those uh, four offensive players who we've seen going to gold a lot. Definitely. And so St. Paul's is just going to be ready to slide on those plays, which they have been doing. Anything you'd like to see from the Gators? I think they're playing amazingly. History teacher Mr. Lazan did disappear. Yes, so. could not get a halftime report from him. Very sorry about that, guys. But we do have lots of photographers here today. Yes. Hopefully we'll see some great pictures from this game. I believe they're starting the, uh, the half the same way they started the game. And I also believe Glenelg is doing the same. Lots of smiling faces on the field. The Gators From are very Molly happy. Molly Vinegar, Gabby Monsell. Love waving to them. We're about to start. Kira Ballas on the draw again. Getting in a very low stance right now. The draw will go behind her towards Caroline Hoskins. It's a little bit of contact and Kira will end up on the ground. She'll go for the check on Glenelg, but the rest will call that across the body. So it will stay with Glenelg. And they'll start to pass it around and settle it. I'd love to see a different approach on attack from them. Maybe a feed from behind rather than up top. But they've been doing a good job of drawing eight meters with this. Looking to try an ISO right now. Number 42 will drive. She'll get by her defenders, but her shot will go wide and it will be backed up by the Dragons. No reset on the shot clock. Ball's up top right now with number 11, looking to drive. She'll get an angle and it will bounce high. A feed in front to number eight and she'll pull it out. 42 looking to drive again. And it'll be called a charge on number 42. Haven't seen a charge issued uh, recently in the game. But that is when a offensive player will dip their shoulder and run into the defender. So it's an offensive foul. And the Gators will clear it, get it back on their attack, start to swing it around. Ball's up top with Sarah Lim right now. Gabby Monsell will set the pick for her, but she will not use it. Maggie Porter looking to drive. She'll pass to Riley Vasile, who will try and use the pick, but too much congestion. But she'll roll off of that and get some space. She'll take a right-handed shot. Great catch by the goalie. Yes, great stop. Shot definitely had some power on it, especially for it being a right-handed shot as a lefty. But she's been shooting like that all day. And she's almost equally as good with her right hand as she is with her left. Ball was out, I believe. Yes, Riley Vasile made a check on the ride. And it will go all it did go out of bounds on the dragons, but the ref called it across the body. So it will stay with the dragons. Very spread out right now. Almost at the restraining line. And they're looking to get an ISO going.
a feed in front to number 42 who will turn and shoot and it will go wide and be backed up a little bit of an awkward play she didn't have a lot of space but they did recover the ball so not a big deal back up top with number eight who will drive and shoot bounce her shot about a foot wide of the goal again recovered by the dragons the shot clock is winding down out about 40 seconds number 23 looking to go to goal but she'll get shut down and be forced to pass it out to 42 number 11 drives and dumps it to 42 who will take a good shot and a great stop by Susan Radeball hard shot to stop but she does it with ease and a high ball out trying to clear it and it will go over the head of Molly Vinegar and go back with the Dragons again they're just swinging it around and catching their breath before they'll start their usual play I believe They like to start it up top and have someone drive and then someone will set a pick and roll off of it and try and get the pass in front of the goal. Number 15 gets some space and she'll rip it lefty. That was Katie Gorski, the Charlotte commit. I believe her second goal of the game. Yes, I think she got the last one. Yes really good shot by her the dragons are really out for it right now yes definitely not letting up and really using the gap and score as a motivator which puts the gap to five goals with the dragons at three and the gators at eight pretty long plays right there took off almost five minutes off the clock so we have just over seven minutes left of the game, of the, sorry, quarter. Same circle set up. Caroline Hoskins and Maggie Flynn again, kind of battling for the inside spot, but it'll go right to Kira Ballas. Great draw. Draws have been going pretty high today. So I don't think that the Dragons were ready for that ball, but Kira Ballas is really aware and just scooped it up. So now uh, Maggie Porter's got it behind for the Gators on attack. She'll pass up to Sarah Lim. They'll just swing it around before they start generating a play. Up top with Caroline Hoskins. And now Marley O'Day will look to drive. She'll get some room, and she'll take it right to the goal. Great bouncer shot, and it will go. Lots of power on that shot. Yes. Lots of power plus a bouncer is almost an immediate goal, especially from a player like that. And she really used her dodge to get a lot of space for a nice open goal. Putting the Gators up 9-3. to three. And halfway through the third quarter. That goal took, I think, 44 seconds. Proving why lacrosse is the fastest sport on two feet. Another very high draw. And Kira Ballas will one-handed grab that out of the air. She'll get a little contact and fall down, get checked, and number 15 for the Dragons recovers that. Not sure if she got pushed or just kind of lost her footing. But it will end up with the Dragons. They'll feed in front from number 15 to number 42, but she'll get tripled. And an errant pass, which is picked up by Sofia Herrera, who will run it up the field. Really great defensive stop. Gavin Monsell will catch the ball running onto the field and get it over. Just really shows that the Gators don't 
get discouraged by an unlucky play, and it just motivates them to work harder. Erin Stewart's now in. Haven't seen her yet this game. Great junior attacker. The ball's down low right now with Maggie Porter. We'll get it on the elbow to Erin Stewart. Now down low with Charlotte Vaughn looking to beat her defender on the crease. Can't get anything, and we'll pass it back to Adam Monsell. Riley Vasile beats her defender and gets a big push while shooting, and the refs will issue a yellow card. Good call. This is the second time it's happened to her shooting, but this time a yellow card will be issued to number 42. Yes, that is Maggie Flanagan. She's definitely been one of the more aggressive attackers on this team. So that will hurt the Dragons a little. But the Gators should really use this to grab a goal or two while the penalty lasts. I'm not sure if she'll run this one in since they are up by so much, but she's looking ready. And she will run it in. And a great shot over the top of the goalie's head. And that's I think her third goal or fourth goal? I think it may be her fourth. It's getting hard to keep track at this point. She's got so many goals. Yes, she has a lot of goals this game. Another great play by her. Nothing you can really do to stop her when she has an eight meter. Yeah, she's even really with that hard push, she went for it, so. Yes, she's a really quick player and often beats her defender. And once she gets by her defender with such a powerful shot, it's pretty much a guaranteed goal, despite how good a goalie may be. Draw will go to Christina King, and she'll pick it up one-handed, forced to pass it back to the defense, and Lily Swing will run it up the field. She's had some great clears this game. Sophia Herrera is running it up the field now. She's also had some really great clear. She's ran it all the way from defense to attack. And she runs it pretty hard. And so she gives the Gators a lot of momentum. Ball's up top now with Sarah Lim. And now over to Caroline Hoskins. And back on the elbow with Aaron Stewart. Maggie Porter's got it now. She'll pass it down low to Charlotte Vaughn, who's looking to have a 1v1 against her defender. Can't get an angle, but she'll get a feed to Caroline Hoskins and in the front. And another goal. Another goal for Caroline Hoskins. Another goal where she catches it, switches it, catches it righty and switches it lefty and scores. She's also, just like Riley, has a very powerful shot with both her right and left hand, and she's been doing a really good job of cutting in when someone draws the double. Classic draw and dump, and she's been doing that all day. And great cut by her and great awareness by Charlotte Vaughn. And the Gators are now up 11-3 to three with just four minutes left of this quarter. Someone went early for the Gators, so Glen Allen Ball, number 42, is running it in. She's back in from her card. I think she may have been released after Riley's goal, but I'm not sure. Ball's up top with number six. Over to number eight, who's looking to drive. She'll get shut down. Back up to 42, who's probably gonna look to drive and she'll look for the pass. But she will get some contact and the ball will be dropped and Kira Ballas is running it up full steam ahead. They have numbers, so all she needs to do is draw and dump. Sarah Lim has it now. Drop pass, but she recovers it. She'll pass it down low to Charlotte Vaughn, who will get it and beat her defender for a goal. First goal of her game, of this game. 
she came off a great hat trick last game. She played great last time against Garrison. Yes, and she's really good at rolling the crease. This time she caught around the crease and then got it and shot and a great bounce shot, perfect placement. That was a very quick play. Yes. I think that whole defensive set and offensive set was in just a minute exactly which is really crazy. That all started with Kira Ballas on the clear, which just shows how important a defensive stop is to a goal. Sarah Lim's on the circle right now, I believe. Hard to tell with this glare. I believe they said that White went early, so it will be Glenn on the ball again, and it's with number 38 right now. And that is the second time that's happened. Yes. Number 38 for the Dragons is Lily Fortin, who's an Oregon commit. One of the many D1 commits they have on this team. Back up top with Lily Fortin. She's looking to drive. She'll try and roll off, but St. Paul sends the double. Number 11's got it in the middle now. And she'll get some contact and go down, but no call. And the Gators will pick it up. Riley Basile running it up right now. Going very fast. She'll get it over the restraining line with a little contact. But the pass was dropped. And it will be Dragon Ball. It's been very back and forth this last minute, which is very tiring for uh, the teams, especially the middies. Good ride by the Gators, working really hard to get back and making it hard for the Dragons to clear the ball. Offensive ride is very important. And even though that play might have been a turnover, the Gators didn't get discouraged and still tried their best to stop the ball. And it really just motivated them, the turnover, to get the ball back. They're playing great defense. She really struggled to get that pass. Yes, yeah, Gators are doing a really good job on their 1v1s and also doing a great job of sending the double when they need it. Glenn Elk takes a very aggressive and powerful shot in front of the goal. I believe it was number 38, but Susan Radeball comes up with another great stop. And now Sarah Lim is running it up the field. And it will be a slash. Number 11 tried to check the ball out of her stick, but her stick went all the way to the ground. And if you try and check and the stick goes all the way to the ground, it is a yellow card. That's their third yellow card this game, too. Yes. And four yellow cards is an unreleasable, I believe. So they're in a little bit of a situation now. Great job by Sophia Herrera getting that ball over the restraining line. And I'm not sure what the call down there was. But it will be a turnover. The Glenelg goalie is running it up right now. She's now double teamed. But she will get the pass off to number 15. We'll get it to number 38. But she'll face some trouble trying to get it over the restraining line. And we that will end the third quarter. Yes, that will end the third quarter. Very aggressive quarter. Definitely. Glen Elg is out for it. Yes, definitely not giving up. And nor are the Gators. They're working really hard. And just keeping up with what they've been doing and what's been working. And not letting a play get in their head. They're really just using it to motivate them.
and we're back for the final corner of this matchup. Score is 12-3 Gators and they scored four points in the third quarter. Yes. And I believe four in the second and four in the first. Oh, wow. Yeah. You are correct. Great math. So hopefully they live up to this streak. We see some new faces on the field. And Riley Vasile will be taking the draw. Yes, we have Izzy Shirtliff in on attack. And we have Caitlin Binnix on defense. And I think Laney Ray, too. If I'm not mistaken. So nice to see a different lineup. And we'll see what they do with this playing time. A very high draw. And Gray will step over the restraining line early. So it will be white ball. Great job by St. Paul's by not getting tempted to get drawn off sides. Very hard when the ball is really close to you. You're really eager to get it. But good job on their part. Maggie Porter looking to drive from the elbow. Can't get anything and she'll pass it down low to Aaron Stewart. Marley O'Day's got it and she'll switch hands from the right elbow and bring it over the front for a goal. I think this is her first of the game. No, I think it's her second. Maybe it is. I definitely heard her chant before this game. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Her second of the day. She's been a little quiet since the first quarter. Scoring-wise, she's definitely been making some great plays on the field and having some great passes. But... Her second goal of the game. I think last game she had three or four. Last game she really had lots of goals. Yes. And she was really crucial in getting the Gators that initial lead coming from a very low scoring first quarter. She is the junior captain on this team. Also, like she was a junior captain for field hockey. So she's really a leader in every aspect. And she will be our 2024-2025 all-school athletic rep. Another draw by Riley Vasile, and she'll pick it up off the bounce. A little bit of an errant pass to Caroline Hoskins, but it will be picked up by Maggie Porter off the bounce. Down low with Izzy Shirtliff. She's facing some pressure. Cam Vasile coming on right now. Ball's behind now with senior Caitlin Binnix. Haven't seen a whole lot of her this season, so I'd love to see her get involved with some plays today. Caroline Hoskins looking to drive, but she'll pass it. Behind with Izzy Shirtliff now. She'll try and drive, but get shut down. And she'll be forced to pass it out to Cam. Back up top with Maggie Porter. Over to Aaron Stewart, looking to drive. Now over to Marley O'Day. And a good pass in front to Aaron Stewart, and she'll turn around and score. Great shot by Aaron Stewart. And a she's also a track star. Yes, rumor has it. Uh, great job by Marley for drawing the defense, and great job by Aaron for being ready for the pass. She just turned and shot it. A great goal by her. I think it's her, definitely her second of the season. I'm not sure if she's had other ones, but she had a goal in one of their games in the preseason. Um, but this is her first conference goal. So very happy to see that, especially so early on in the season. And that puts the Gators up 14-3 to with eight and a half minutes to go in the game. Another draw, that'll go over towards Sarah Lim. 
will get flicked up in the air. Riley Vasile will get pushed to the ground, but no call on that. She might have just tripped. While Glen Elk was trying to switch fields on their defensive end. And the ball is out. Yes. Missed catch and the ball will roll out. So it will be a turnover for the Gators. Or not for the Gators. A turnover on the Dragons and Gator ball. Sophia Herrera is on the attacking side right now. Very great defender. Love to see her try and run to goal. She's very fast. I'm sure she could get by the defense. Oh, Kaylin Binnix gets pushed to the ground up top. And I think she'll be given the ball on the 12, the whistle start, or sorry, self start. Sophia Herrera with the ball now looking to drive. She'll beat her defender and go to goal. Good stop by the Glenel goalie. And she'll walk it up looking for a clear. Clear made to number 12. And will be taken out of the restraining line by number 15. Number 22 has it behind right now. Looking to settle it. It's been a back and forth a little, so just trying to catch their breath. And they're trying to do an ISO with number 11 right now. And they'll call a cross check on, I think that's, that's not, they called a cross check on, I think that might be Kinsley Pittler. And the pass, yes, that was Kinsley Pittler. Um, but the ball will go out of bounds on the gladiators. Or not gladiators. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Dragons. <laughs> Dragons. Sorry. The Glen Elk Public Schools gladiators. Pardon me. We also had a goalie change up for the Gators. Kylie Keenan's in now. She's committed to Charlotte. Charlotte. And there's two girls on Glen Elk's team committed to Charlotte. Gators got it down on the attack. Up top now with Sarah Lim. And she'll beat her defender and drive to goal. Good bouncer bottom left. It was just a little wide and it will go out and be backed up by Glendale. And it will be Glendale ball coming out. It's back with the goalie now. She's looking for a pass. Seem to be pretty tightly marked up right now. But she'll pass it right in the middle to number 38. Who will dump it to number 32 to get it on their attack. Number 22 looking to drive. And a good shot, very powerful, but that was stopped by Kylie Keenan. Took that one like a champ. Saw it into her stick. It did bounce out, but she had a great stop. And Gators did pick it up. And Kinsley Pittler is running it up the field right now. Another freshman for the Gators. Very good athlete. Gabby Munsell's got it up top right now. Over to Cam Vasile. Just looking to draw and dump it. Can't get anything there, but she'll get it to Grace Tedesco who rolls around the crease. A little bit of a tricky angle and it was stopped by the Glenelg goalie. Glenelg will run it up the field. I think they're going to call three seconds. Oh, 
I'm not sure what the call was. It may have been three seconds, but Glenelg will get it at the 12. Pass number 32 in front. Good defense by Caitlin Binnix. Number 30 looking to take the 1v1 against Margaret Baker, who we haven't seen in yet this game. But she's playing some great defense. Up top to number 11 looking to drive. Good D by Gabby Monsell, but she will get by and score. Good bounce shot. She shot that as she was falling down and finished the shot. And that will make the score 4-14. to 14. Gator's still up. With two minutes left. Yes. Two minutes left and a running clock. Caitlin Binnix on the circle now, along with Cam Vasile and Riley Vasile. Sister connection. Love to see a sister-to-sister -sister draw. Riley takes it. Cam grabs it out of the air. And number 42 actually took this draw. We can see eight take it most of the game, but... Maggie Flanagan will take that one. The Gators did win it, though. Have it back on their defense right now. No rush to get it up the field. No more shot clock. Gabby Monsell running it over. Under a minute left. Some commotion at the top of the 12. And it will be given to Guy Munsell. So, around 40 seconds left. Good feed in front, but it was a little far ahead and was picked up by number 37. And she'll run it over the restraining line. Now with number 11 looking to drive to goal. Looks like there might have been a charge, but number 11 shot, and it was just absolutely vacuumed up by Kylie Keenan. Great stop. Way to not let them score in the last couple seconds of the game. And the Gators really want Izzy Shirtliff to run into goal, but the time will run out. It was a great game. And the game is officially over. The score, 14 to four for the Gators, continuing their winning streak and another conference win against a good team, definitely boosting their confidence. And thank you for watching. This has been a St. Paul Sports Network production and we'll see you next time for the next, for a middle school matchup on Wednesday. Thank you.